Okay, before we go and start doing some cool JavaScript and HTML manipulation, I will discuss first how JavaScript works in terms of scoping. This will allow us to understand or visualize how data is accessed and manipulated in different parts of our JavaScript. Before working on with data, let's understand how data resides and is accessed in JavaScript. All data in JavaScript lives in some form of scope. There are two general types of scope in JavaScript. So we'll need to add um, some like notes here. We we'll go to the script and remove this. So I'm using a comment to show you, uh, well, not really show, but just put in here the two general types of scope in JavaScript. Two general types of scope. The first is global, and the second is local. So the idea here is that data that is created in the global scope can be accessed anywhere, while data that is created in a local scope can only be accessed within that scope and its children. Meaning, if there are uh, sub-local scopes within it, it can still be accessed. This um, it can still access that same data created in the parent scope. Now, given an empty script file, any data we put here can be a global scope. So this whole thing here, if I put date, data that is instantiated here, it will be accessed by, um, in, uh, by any function or any scope or any local scope because it's a global scope. Now, a local scope would always have some form of starting and ending character. And that set of char characters usually is a pair of curly braces. That means anything inside these curly braces will only be accessed inside unless stated by other means when data is needed to be accessed outside of it. Now, that it, now given that it's a little bit clearer, let's discuss how we can instantiate data in the form of variables. There are three ways to create variables. The first is using, so let's, the first is using the keyword var. By setting a variable using var, we can usually create variables in the global scope or in the local scope. The thing with var though is that locally instantiated variables with the same name and using the var keyword affects the parent or global scope variable. So I'm just going to show you an example on this one. So var a, I'm going to do this, and then add, let's say, a console log. I'll just add a and a here. And we know that if we print it out, it will show us 0. Now, we do the same thing here, and instead of using um, uh, zero, we end, we put it as one. Now the question is, what would be the value here? I always forgot my semicolons. So what would be the value here? Now the thing is, would it be zero or one? So let's test it out can see if I click on this one that means this one is the one that um, prints it out and if I press escape we can see the console here if I click on this one we can see where it was printed and so on and so forth as you can see here this one says that it is already one even if the change happened inside the scope so that means anything that is done inside another scope uh, but uses the same variable name affects that variable name so to uh, make it a little bit more predictable we will use the keyword let which is the same as var but allows us to be a little bit more um, predictable when it comes to scoping so let's do this uh, I just want this one. 
So there, I'm going to copy it here as well. And instead of B, and then we copy again. And what would be the question? We already know that this is one. And let's try it out. You can see at the end here, it's still zero because the scope of B equals one happens only inside this scope. The thing with let is we can change the value of B without any problem. So five, and if we do this again, so we know that this is zero. And should it be five? Yes, it should be 5 because we have changed the value of uh, b. So let allows us to change the value inside a variable. Now the last one that we can use is of course const. Const may, means that the value inside the variable is always constant or never changing. And it behaves the same way as let when it comes to scoping. So if we do this, and we do this, if what I say is correct, it should still be 0. And as we have seen, C0, if I click here, C is also 0. So it uh, behaves the same way as let, except that we cannot change the value of c. So if I do this, c equals 5, and refresh it, it will return an error at this part because there's an assignment to a constant variable which is a type error. Now, given that we have discussed how variables in scoping work, we will now go to the different data types that we can use in JavaScript.